All right, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in once again. Uh, my name is Charlie Lefevre. Uh, I'm one of the rotational ministers at the uh, Chestnut Mound Church of Christ in Chestnut Mound, Tennessee. Uh, we're coming at you, you with a, another lesson. Um, given the circumstances, uh, we have opened back up as a congregation. Uh, we're still practicing all the social distancing. We're still doing the uh, Lord's Supper cups, uh, the communion cups that have the two-in-one um, we're still doing stuff to try to prevent people from catching the COVID-19 virus, uh, but we understand that there are some people, we understand there are some people that are still not comfortable yet, quite quite yet going to church, um, and that's completely understandable. Uh, so we decided uh, to upload our uh, Sunday morning lessons, uh, our Sunday morning sermons, to our YouTube channel uh, in case you uh, don't feel comfortable getting out that you can, uh, you can still hear the message of uh, Jesus Christ being taught. Um, so just to reiterate, excuse me, just to reiterate, um, if you do decide to just watch the sermon on, uh, on YouTube instead, uh, this is the exact same sermon that I would be preaching Sunday morning at the congregation. Uh, you're not going to be hearing anything different. You're not going to be hearing any different message. It's going to be the exact same message. So, uh, with that being said, I thought we'd talk a little bit this morning about the ninth hour. Um, I want to begin by reading Matthew 27, 45 through 50. Um, this is a very, very well-known passage. Uh, this is the actual passage with the little heading above verse 45 that talks about Jesus dying on the cross. Um, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And at about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yelled, and yielded up his spirit. So, a little bit about this text. Um, Mark fifteen twenty five tells us, and it was the third hour, and they crucified him. So we can get so from these two passages that we've just read, we can get an estimation about how long Jesus hung on the cross, um, and we can get a estimation about what time it was when he roughly uh, died. Um, so roughly Jesus hung on the cross for about six hours after being crucified, you know, after, after he went through the, uh, beating that he took, after he went through the humiliation, the crown of thorns being placed on his head, everything that he went through from carrying his own cross all the way up to, uh, where they were eventually going to crucify him. Um, so after all this, Jesus hung on the, after they crucified him, Jesus hung on the cross for about six hours. And then when the ninth hour came, Jesus finally died. Uh, so what can we learn about the ninth hour? Um, well, you know, the subject of this sermon is the death of Jesus. And as I've already mentioned, the title of this sermon is the ninth hour. Um, you know, the ninth hour is the hour of endurance, darkness, and death. And I want everyone to learn from this sermon to learn that Jesus endured these things so that we could overcome um, so let's begin our discussion. The ninth hour is the hour of endurance. You know, Jesus came to this moment having suffered insults, injuries, blasphemies, railings, and torture. Jesus suffered a lot of things during his time on earth. Uh, he went through a lot mentally. He went through a lot physically. Um, and even went through a lot spiritually, if you think about it. You know, he went through the same temptations that we went through and that we still go through. Um... He was tempted the same way as every man who has ever walked this earth has been tempted. Um, he has been beaten. Uh, he was uh, cursed. He was mocked. I mean, Jesus went through so much during his time on earth. It, it poses the question, why did he do this? Why did he leave everything that he had in heaven? Why did he leave the, the right hand of God from heaven to come to this earth? Not to take the form of a king. Not to take the form of a high ruler. Not to take the form of a rich man. Why did he leave heaven when he had everything that he could ever need up there? Why? Sorry, there was a bee. 
why did he leave all of that to come to this earth to become a servant, a carpenter? Why did he leave earth or why did he leave heaven to take on the form of a servant? It's simple. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says this. It says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Simply put, he came to this earth because he wanted to. He wanted to help us. You know, from the moment that Adam and Eve sinned in the, in, in the book of Genesis, God had a plan to save mankind. See, when Adam and Eve, before Adam and Eve sinned, everything was perfect in God's eyes. There was no... Um, there was no separation of God. There was no uh, sin to be heard of. It was just God and Adam and Eve. It was just them. They walked the garden every day. They had no worries. And then the moment Adam and Eve sinned, when the moment they disobeyed God, we were separated from God. And when that happened, God started putting a plan together to save mankind once again. Because if you remember, after God figured out what had happened, he told them that you surely will die. He told them that you will surely die. He didn't mean a physical death. In fact, Adam was one of the uh, oldest people to ever live in the Bible times. Um, but Jesus, or excuse me, he was talking about a spiritual death. And that's where Jesus comes into play. You see, from the and then after Adam and Eve sinned, you, you know, you get all the other stories. You get Noah, you get Abraham, you get all the other stories in the Old Testament. Then you get to the prophets who start prophesying about this great king who's going to come over and he's going to establish a kingdom. But what people truly didn't understand about that was Jesus was never coming for a physical earthly kingdom. He was coming for a spiritual kingdom. He was coming for our salvation. Jesus' joy was our salvation. He endured it so that we could have eternal life. You know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, that's the reason God sent Jesus. He didn't send Jesus so that we could all perish. He sent Jesus to come to this world, live a perfect life, go through everything that He went through, every beating, every mockery, every ounce of pain, die for us, be resurrected on the third day so that we could have a hope of eternal life. You see, Jesus' life was perfect. Jesus' sacrifice was a perfect sacrifice. If you remember in the Old Testament, uh, people would do, perform sacrifices to roll over their sins for the next year. It didn't truly forgive them of their sins. However, with Jesus' sacrifice, it did forgive all of our sins. You see, there is no rolling over. There is no uh, having to pray for, for There is no um, having to do anything else. Literally, the only reason why Jesus came to earth was to be the perfect sacrifice. Sorry, once again, it was a B. Um, you know, and if it wasn't for that sacrifice, none of us would have that hope of eternal life, which is in heaven. So the second thing that we have to understand about the ninth hour is that the ninth hour also uh, had darkness. Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 says this. It says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until, unto the ninth hour. Sorry, it's really windy here now too. I wasn't expecting uh, the wind to kick up like that. Sorry about that. So... There was not a literal darkness, but a symbolic one in the death of Jesus. You know, if you remember, if you've seen any movie that talks about Jesus' death, one of the only ones that uh, mostly that gets most of it right is the Passion of Christ. You know, most of us have seen the Passion of Christ. Uh, it usually comes around, it comes on around Easter on one of the religious channels. Um, but if you remember, when Jesus died, this big dark. Darkness took over the um, took over the, the the land area. You know, it got really, really dark, and then of course everything else happened. Um, but in this instance, it's not talking about a literal darkness. There is there is no literal darkness that's going on between the uh, the sixth hour and the ninth hour. So it's talking about Jesus' death because they because we know Jesus' death is coming. 
In Luke chapter 22, verse 53, it says this. It said, Jesus said to his judges, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. But Jesus overcame the darkness so that we could not have to be, so that we would not have to be subject to it. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 said, He hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So simply put, Jesus went through this darkness, went through this so that we didn't have to. We never have to worry about seeing this darkness because Jesus did it. You know, I'm, I was talking about how Jesus was a perfect sacrifice and how his um, his uh, sacrifice was, uh, it removes all of our sin. It forgives us all of our sin. Our sins are not brought up. It's not like God's holding them over our head saying, oh, you did this though. God, I mean, that's not what Jesus' sacrifice was about. Our sins are completely forgiven the moment that we choose to obey Jesus. But one of the things that I've always, uh, I, I mentioned in, in the last uh, video lesson that we've done that I played football in high school. And uh, our character coach is what we called him, but he was really our team chaplain. Uh, Rick Burnett, he was a great teacher. Uh, he taught me many great lessons. Um Outside of football, outside of school, he, t he taught me a lot. Uh, he helped me become who I am today. Um, but one of my favorite lessons that I ever heard about from him was he was talking about sin. He asked us one night, he, he took a little piece of paper. And it wasn't your typical piece of paper. It was a little piece of flash paper. And he told us, he said, write something on this that you have done that's been bad in the last six months. So everyone wrote something on there. Um, I wrote sin on mine because I, you know, every single one of us have sinned. And surely to goodness, I've sinned in the last six months. I'm not saying, I mean, no one is perfect, so, except for Jesus. So I wrote down the word sin, and I handed it to him, and he he read a few of them off, you know. Uh, some of them probably shouldn't have wrote some of the stuff that they wrote because our football coach was sitting where he could hear uh, this lesson being taught. So, um, but in the end, uh, he started talking about it. He said, I want you all to know something. Every single thing here will be remembered by everybody else. But G with Jesus, you never have to worry about Jesus bringing this up. And he puts it in this little aluminum pan. He takes a lighter and he lights the paper on fire. And the paper just goes up in flames. And then you look down, but there's nothing there. There's no ashes. There's no, uh, there, there's nothing. It's all the, all the paper is gone. He said, with Jesus, your sins are completely forgiven. There's no remains of them. That's what it happens here. You see, Jesus' sacrifice was so perfect for us that we don't have to worry about ever having to deal with darkness. We don't ever have to worry about dealing with sin anymore if we just obey Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to sin because we're human and we make mistakes. But what that simply means is this. With Jesus' sacrifice, we don't have to worry about everything that goes on in this world. So the third thing that we learn from the ninth hour is death. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, it said, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So why did Jesus have to die? In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, But we see Jesus, who has made a little lower, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with his with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Simply put, he died so that we could live. He died so we could have a hope of, it, of an eternal life in heaven, not an eternal death in hell. He died so that we can have that hope of being in heaven one day, worshiping God, worshiping Him. That's why He died. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says this. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He also Himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Simply put, Jesus came to this world, lived a perfect life, never once sinned, but he faced temptation every single day just like we do. Not, not once did he ever give in to sin. He came to this world, lived a perfect life, and then died on the cross of Calvary for each and every single one of us. Every single one of us. 
so that we could have a hope of eternal life, which is in heaven. You know, one of the things that I still very, I found very interesting about Jesus' character as portrayed in the Bible um, was the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed. Because if you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, he didn't want to go through with this. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew the pain that he was going to go through. He knew the suffering he was going to go through. He knew the humiliation he was going to go through. He didn't want to go through with it. He prayed. He said, God, if there is any other way to let this cup pass from me, let it be. But not thy will, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus understood what he was going to do. What was going to happen. He said, if there is any other way, let this happen. But he also knew that he had to go through with it if there was no other way. He knew that he had to suffer. He had to be humiliated. He had to go through everything that he went through for us. Because without that sacrifice, without him doing that, there is no chance of us getting into heaven. Jesus' sacrifice was the perfect sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice was the ultimate sacrifice. Without Jesus' sacrifice, there is no shot of us getting to heaven. We're just like Adam and Eve, going to be lost, wandering this earth, wondering why we messed up. One of the most powerful things that I've ever learned about Jesus was his willingness to make that sacrifice. Because if you remember, if you think about it, we sing the song, he could have called 10,000 angels. We sing that song. It's a very powerful song. It's one of my favorite songs to sing in the songbook. But if you think about that song, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have. He very well could have if he wanted to, but he didn't. He died alone for you and me. Jesus came to this world, suffered, bled, suffered, bled, and died for each and every single one of us. We have to remember that that sacrifice should not be in vain. So in conclusion, the ninth hour is the hour that Jesus endured the pain. It's the hour that Jesus over outlasted the darkness. And it's also the hour that Jesus overcame death. The ninth hour is very powerful. Jesus overcame a lot during the ninth hour. But what hour is it for you? Are you in a time of suffering and pain? Have you been affected by the darkness and wickedness of this world? Perhaps you've been recently touched by death or, or worry about it. Jesus' message in the ninth hour is that you, do, you don't have to endure the pain alone. Jesus came to this world. He suffered, bled, and died all alone for you and me. But we don't have to have that same death. We don't have to have that same pain. We don't have to have that. We don't have to deal with that alone because Jesus is by our side. Jesus' message, message in the ninth hour is that you need not give into the darkness. Jesus outlasted the darkness so that we can outlast the darkness. Jesus did everything that he could to outlast the darkness, and he did. We need to do everything that we can to outlast the darkness, and that's including having Jesus by our side. And finally, Jesus' message in the ninth hour is that there is hope for life after death. You see, one or two things is going to happen to us while we're on this earth. And I am guarantee you, one, of, one or two things will happen while we're on this earth. A, we will experience a physical death, or B, Jesus is going to come back. Either way, there is hope for us after this life is over. Because through Jesus, because of Jesus' sacrifice, there is hope for us after death. One or two things is guaranteed to happen. I don't know which. No one knows which, but I can guarantee you that one of those two things will happen. We will experience a physical death or Jesus is going to come back. So simply put, the question is, are you ready for that day? Are you ready to take on the ninth hour with Jesus? Because as we've mentioned, Jesus is by our side all the way through. This is typically the point in the sermon where I offer the invitation. I'm not going to offer a traditional uh, invitation um, because, you know, this is obviously a video, but I will say this. The invitation is always open. If you ever need anything, if you ever have any questions, or if you want to study more, or if you think that you're ready to make that final step, to, to begin your walk with Christ, you can contact any of us at the Chestnut Mountain Church of Christ. You can. There are ministers, there are people there that will help you begin that walk with Christ. There are people there who will help you come back on your journey with Christ. 
I want to thank everyone for tuning in once again. I know uh, this is still a little bit, uh, the circumstances are still a little bit awkward uh, with the COVID-19 situation. Um, but everything is slowly getting back to normal, I believe. Um, but again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And again, this is the exact same sermon that I will be preaching Sunday morning uh, at Chestnut Mound uh, at the con to the congregation. So you're not missing anything. Um, I just want to, we want to do this as help for you who quite don't feel, who quite don't feel yet comfortable, uh, coming back to church. Um, again, thank you for tuning in and we hope to see all you, all, everyone real soon. Thank you.